with this one, to be honest. You're bored. <laughs> it's kind Don't. of a rerun of the Super Metroid opening, which probably does it sh more short and sweet than this one, but I love Metro Prime. Yeah, it's... see, I... As is the case with a lot of these games, I've watched Carrot play through them, haven't played them myself, but I, I gather that part of the attraction with the intro of this one is more the fact that it's the first time it's 3D in Metroid and you're coming back and all this. And the last Metroid, main Metroid game we'd had was Super Metroid on Super Nintendo. Metroid Prime was the first time we finally saw Samus in 3D. And yeah. It was really cool. Yeah. Get to see Ridley again. <laughs> There's classic Metroid tunes right off the bat. Uh, and as you go through the space station, you get to learn all your new game, all the game mechanics, the morph ball and the scanning and the charge beam, only to lose it all in classic Metroid style, which uh, means you can't wait to get it all back to use it again. And it's subtle, indirect storytelling, which is always good, like a good yeah. Resident Evil. And it's got a countdown sequence. Which I mean, is cool. it looked fun, it just looked a little bit sort of. It's compared slower. to the rest of our list. The rest of the list it's is a lot more slower. exciting. It's anyway, okay, so. Slower. Moving on to number 14. Star Fox Assault. Star Fox Assault. First game after the brilliance that was Star Fox Adventure. We're the only two people in the world that like Star <laughs> Fox Adventure. <laughs> Everyone loves Star Fox 64, called Lilac Wars in Europe. And that was, yeah, all, yeah. that was all... That was a good game. That was really that good. That was game. where the barrel roll yeah. started. Do barrel roll! Then Adventures came out, and everyone was like, what the fuck? <laughs> there was like... Very little space shooting. <laughs> yeah. It was basically a Zelda. So it was, then, it was. I mean, I found it enjoyable, but... Yeah, I enjoyed I it as well. But it's not, not if I'd have expected a shooter out of it. it. It's not much of a Star Fox game. Yeah. And then, they make Star Fox Assault, and it's awesome! The music is awesome, it's called Space Battleground, and they, it was so good they actually put it in Super Smash Brothers. The graphics are pretty good for a GameCube. They, they were, yeah. They even throw in a really nostalgic remake, kind of, of the intro to Star Fox 64. Yeah. And you go all the way from space, all the way down to, like, ground level. Yeah, you do, don't you? You start flying through around uh, around the ground with the new enemies around appearing as well. It's a return to form for one level. <laughs> yeah, the rest of the yeah. game is sort of... Not great again. There's like, I think you said there was like four. There's like four handful, good levels. Yeah, like maybe four good space shooter levels. The yeah. rest are quite poor. But it's a great first level anyway. Yeah. Considering the rest of the game. Right. Lucky 13. Sonic Adventure 2. Sonic Adventure 2 Battle oh, on GameCube. Yeah. It's just fun. It's fast fun. Fast and fun. So fun. And the music's infectious. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you know the lyrics, it's hard not to just be like, rolling around at the speed of sound. Moving on, number 12. <laughs> no, I'm not finished. <laughs> Bastard. It's really cool. Um, I thought I was going to say now, Dicker. Oh, there's loads of different ways you can go through the level. Um, great replay value, get your higher scores and things. Do all, yeah. all kinds of tricks. But as we said, it's fun. You, you do it again just for fun. Yeah, I've played that level. Dozens and dozens and dozens of times. Yeah. Just because it's, it's short. fun to do. It's sure, it's not like it takes you ages to replay. It was that popular that they even brought it back for Sonic Generations when they remade it. Yeah. In Mega Drive style and in modern Sonic style. Yeah. yeah. Really cool. Bayonetta 2. Bayonetta 2, number 12. I hadn't seen this before, <laughs> before today. I didn't really have any clue what Bayonetta was. Very Japanese. Yeah, Japanese. you'll uh, un unapologetically, unapologetically Japanese. Japanese. It's, um, yeah, it did go on a little bit. It, it was long, because the, the sort of intro of this game is the whole first level. So it goes on for quite some time and gets a, from me, my opinion watching it, it got a little bit samey. Imagine it's, if you're playing it, you know, you're playing always in the it, you're, you're excited. It, it's a good half hour. Yeah. But the graphics are amazing for a Wii U. They are, yeah. I have to admit, I was really surprised by how good it looked. Um, yeah. Does the, I would almost say it had a really good way of teaching you the controls, but there is one tiny part where it suddenly says, "Okay, this button is soft strike. This button is this." Oh, right. Yeah, where it's at least yeah, the screen goes yeah. blue, and it's like, "This is what you do," and it's like, "Ah!" It was almost <laughs> brilliantly done. But yeah, yeah. Besides that, it's just it's ridiculous. That's why I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, it's just crazy. Yeah. Metal Gear Rising. 
almost the same reasons. Yeah. yeah this that's... is um, a total departure from Metal Gear standards. It's uh. It it was because I expected this game to be all sort of stealthy, moving around, and then you start up and it's just. It's hack them and slash them. <laughs> it, it's a it's a spin off. <laughs> anyway, you can featuring the unpopular Raiden. Although in this game he's pretty cool. Um, yeah, it's kind of like Bayonetta, except it goes in a slightly different direction. It's more intense and more gory and more violent. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I like that, and it pits you against the Metal Gear straight away, which is unexpected. But yeah. welcome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, the only it was. I would otherwise put Metal Gear Solid 5 on the list. Just putting that out there. Um, fair enough, fair enough. Right, we're in the top 10 with Heavy Rain. Number 10, Heavy Rain. Slow one. This is a slow burner. Um, it's on the list for a similar reason to one of our picks. I'm not going to tell you which one that is. <laughs> but it's low down on the list because the other one does it a lot better. But it's very different. It's uh, it introduces you to a whole new different genre of game. It's more yeah. like an interactive film. Yeah. Um, but it's one of the first games where I really felt that emotionally invested in the characters. No. So it starts off very sort of it plods along for about ten minutes, then you lose your son, and all of a sudden it's a mood whiplash. And it gets very, yeah. I don't want to say depressing, but I probably should. Yeah. This is probably why I put it quite kind Bit of more low. miserable. It's yeah, it's it's supposed to be. Yeah. But in a sense that it's like Yeah. Yeah. Now you've got yeah, a, now yeah. you've got a video game to play and you just feel shit. <laughs> <laughs> right. Nine. Ma Mass Effect two. Uh well, you spend an entire game in Mass Effect one building up your pie and your team. And in Mass Effect two it all goes to shit. Yeah. Spoilers for Mass Effect One if you haven't played it. Yeah, <laughs> they completely blow your ship to crap, and uh, you yourself are pretty much dead, and you get revived by some weird chap called the Elusive Man, who we don't know anything about yet. So um, that's pretty much what makes it so interesting. You don't really yeah, start the game with quite, any of the team. Quite jarring. This is a, this is a better intro if you've played one. Yeah, if you you're more involved with it and where it's come from. Exactly. If you haven't played Mass Effect One, you ain't gonna know who these people are and you ain't gonna care. If you <laughs> yeah. played Mass Effect One, it's probably not what you expected to start the game like. You're probably expected to start with teammates that you're familiar with. But nope. And that's why it's it cool. It did. Uh, next we have Tomb Raider, the twenty thirteen reboot. Yes. I believe it's called Survivor, something like that. Oh, that's the tagline. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. Um, a real different direction for the series. A little bit too different sometimes because there's not enough tombs. But <laughs> yeah. in the intro, though, the we're, intro, we're only intro. The intro is brilliant. Um, much younger Lara Croft starting off, and in, straight away she just gets her ass kicked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, the swift punch to the face. <laughs> yeah, but what's cool about it is it. It starts you off in like this little cave, and as you go through, you're you sort of do mini puzzles that you're going to be coming across more often in tombs that you'll find in the game. Oh, it right. kind of warms you up for the the kind of game it's going to be. Yeah. At the same time, it's dragging Lara through like a pit of hell to force her into being the tomb maker that you <laughs> yeah, know yeah. from the other games. It's forging the path. Yeah, in a sense. That's a that's a good good word. Good turn of phrase, bastard. <laughs> God of War three. Um, it's just fucking cool. Yeah, you're on yeah, the back. To be fair. You're on the back of a Titan that is climbing Mount Olympus, and you're trying to kick Zeus's ass. Yeah. that is a good start to a game. I mean, when you, you just that starts, and the camera sort of panning up the mountain, and then it hits those huge Titans, and you just say, "Fuck it out." Yeah, it gives you a sense of scale that's just unreal. It's it's pretty damn good. And the graphics were awesome for the time. Um, still are actually pretty good looking. I haven't seen yeah. the remastered version, but it's, it's yeah. still looks pretty good. And I re actually kind of liked how they did the credits, where it covers everything that's happened in the previous two games in the style of like a Greek vase. Yeah, I think that was really, yeah, that was a really, really cool. nice touch. Yeah, um, yeah, it's just really cool. That one, yeah. awesome. Yeah, and awesome. the music's amazing as always in God of War. 
Batman Arkham Asylum. I'm Batman. I'm Batman. We'll cut that out. No, we're not. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm <am> Batman. <laughs> Bearing in mind, we had never ever had a good Batman game before Arkham Asylum, and then that no. that thing came out and instantly sucked into the game. Yeah, that was. It, you it might was say good. it's a little slow because all you do is follow the Joker through. It is, but the thing is, this it's so interesting what the Joker's saying, and then the environment you're in, it's just yeah. so so interesting that it's not boring. It That's doesn't it. feel it doesn't feel as slow as you're it not actually is. Exactly. You're not just walking through the asylum, you're listening to the Joker tell jokes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is always yeah. good. And they throw in loads of little foreboding things of what's coming. Yeah. Like we get to see Killer Croc and we get to there's a bit with Doctor Young in there and Yeah, yeah. it's just really cool. And it's got the voice cast from the animated series. Yeah. Which is ten points to Gryffindor for that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No Alfred though. No, Alfred. no, there's no, there's no Alfred. Oh shit! It was shit. Well, moving on. <laughs> right. Uh, Star Wars Rogue Squadron Two Rogue Leader. Hmm. It's good. What a way to start a game than the assault on the Death Star. Yeah. The end of a film. Start again. Yeah. That is one hell of a way to start a game. It's the closest I think a video game ever came to being like the movies. Yeah. And I am still amazed. I I even said oh, yeah, it when I was yeah. re- when I was recording the game for this list. I am amazed it's on GameCube. The graphics yeah, are unbelievable. It does look good for GameCube. And the music is John Williams score. Yeah, is great. Well. but the way they've cut it into the gameplay is brilliant. Like when you fly down the trench and then the music changes and it's use the force. Yeah. Music. It's like oh my god, I'm playing the movie. <laughs> yeah, and it's it like to that extent it even cuts seamlessly two clips of the movie yeah for example when you blow the Death Star up spoilers <laughs> <laughs> it, it just cuts to it but you don't even realise you know what I mean it looks yeah it's, it's done so it's well it's so good the graphics are amazing the sound is amazing and uh, and the controls are good as well yeah because I don't know if anyone played the first Rogue Squadron on N64 but no. it was on N64 that should be all you need to know. <laughs> <laughs> Best control ever. Right? Not right. sure. James Bond 007 Nightfire. Nightfire. What a game. That's, the game in general was amazing, but that first level, you're driving yeah. through Paris. Everyone goes on about Saving Goldeneye. a femme fatale and then it, it turns. Yeah. It's so good. Everyone goes on about Goldeneye. I say fucking Nightfire beats it by a long way. It's... 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 Uh, it, it's so good. You also it is good. You get you get to drive the Vanquish. Yeah. In the first level, it's everything. You got you're shooting from a helicopter. You drop into a Vanquish, and you. It's got rockets. It's got rockets. It's, it's Q just, boosters and the Q wedge, which is a brilliant yeah. name. And it's again, just, similar to Sonic, it's so fast. It's just yeah. And you've got all these different sort of bond moments to collect and unlock and stuff oh yeah that you need to go again but you don't mind doing it again because one well one as we say it's, it's just really fun but it's so short and gets you into it and you know you know sets the scene so well it's action packed it's got brilliant music because it's the James Bond theme yeah, all the way through yeah. and the graphics were pretty good for the time he looked were, like to be fair. he looked like Pierce Brosnan he, he doesn't did. he doesn't sound like him <laughs> but he looked like him yeah and that's good enough it's, and it's uh, just a shame they drink dry they're going to be drink driving at the end of that yeah and champagne in the car that's kind of bad but yeah. uh, it may have been higher otherwise yeah good theme tune though yeah um <laughs> <laughs> next up Resident Evil 4 yeah, the right, village. Top three. My personal favourite to play. Yeah, I, I, I've replayed this so many times just just because it's so good. So in the opening cutscene, Leon tells us all about how Umbrella is finished. <laughs> Lol joke. Yeah. Um, Four more movies. <laughs> so naturally, you sort of ask yourself, well, what is there to do in my new Resident Evil? There's no zombies. There's no T virus. Right. There's no Umbrella. We got to save the president's daughter. Yeah. And we are sent to some European Pueblo. El Pueblo. El Pueblo. I don't know if it's El Pueblo, but it's Pueblo. Pueblo. And we find out that shit's gone down yeah. somewhere. You and your your support immediately gets captured and burnt. And <laughs> <laughs> sorry if I found it hilarious how abruptly you put that. <laughs> um She throated straight away. It's not 
immediate action, but it builds. It builds in a very good way. It, Again, it's not slow, but it's not throwing you in at the deep end. Well, it's good that it doesn't do that because it's a totally different format for the series. This yeah. was the first game which was over the shoulder. Yeah, it's a totally different yeah. setting, and it takes its time to get started, but not too long. No, it it doesn't even throw in a zombie or a creepy mansion right off the bat. It just sort of slowly builds. It builds a bit. You've got that one. There's just the one. Yeah, just you've the got one. that one in that shack. Yeah, and, um, just to ease you in. Yeah, but then you come out the shack. And then you come out the shack. And and a, oh, there's three. What is this? You come out and then yeah, <laughs> yeah. You jump out of the window. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit faster paced than you sort of originally think. But then you're walking down that track and it's kind of quiet. There's the odd person around. You save a dog. Yeah. You save blow, blow up some mines. Save, save the dog. Don't be a dickhead. Yeah. <laughs> blow up some mines. And then you eventually get down to the village and then you see the, the support. Police officers come with you. You've already been caught. You're on your own right off the bat, which was to kind of be expected if you really think about it. Mm. And then if you, if you were unlucky and you go the wrong way first time if you go in the wrong building at the wrong time then you're left with a what are they called Leatherface no no the, he's got a name though it's Dr. Salvador is it Salvador yeah basically the the guys with the chainsaw coming straight at you in the first thing which if you're not used to is fucking scary yeah if you don't if you've not seen one before and that would have been the first interaction with the chainsaw oh, yeah. that that sense when you hit that chainsaw going in that end you're like oh fuck because <laughs> if you haven't done that you don't know where the shotgun is if you haven't played before you don't know you could just nab it off that per- that picture so yeah that, it's just so good and all that and they finish it off with where's everybody going bingo, bingo. that's exactly. Resident Evil yep <laughs> two on its own oh very good uh, hey. I didn't know what you were doing uh, Bioshock Bioshock some Couldn't people this some out. people will be annoyed that's not number one but I think our number one beats it Bioshock it is, is wow well, that moment it, it, uh, let me put it this way I played the demo before getting the game about I don't know five times yeah. because it, it, the demo is just the first 20 minutes that's how good the intro is uh, yeah you, if you haven't played it just do yourself a favour and just Either go find a video of just the intro and no one talking over it, or play it yourself and just that first five minutes of when you first see Rapture. Yeah, is the, just the, the, the moment where you get on the bathosphere and it's going down. You're watching this little PowerPoint by Andrew Ryan, and yeah. then he st- he starts to build things up, and then it comes down, and then boom, a squid yeah. flies over your head, and there's Rapture. And it's like, oh, it's like underwater city, and just, it's so it just it looks amazing. You got whales swimming around to show how big it is, sperm whales, Scale. yeah. And these buildings that dwarf them. And if you're paying attention, you'll notice all little references to stuff that's going to come later. And uh, then you arrive in Rapture, and it ain't as pretty as it looks. No, the not. lights go out. And you, you start. Freaking out because someone's trying to cut their way into your bathosphere, and then you meet Atlas. 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 Would you kindly, Atlas? Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, yeah. and then the sort of yeah, it's just so good this game, and the intro of it is just someone else, and it's so different looking. Yeah. Sixties Art Deco. It was yeah. It sort of it takes you back in time to like steampunk Art Deco style, completely a style of its own. It's, yeah, definitely, definitely worth a look at. Definitely. And if you like that one, skip two and then play Infinite. <laughs> Alright, number one! Number one! The Last of Us, obviously. The Last of Us, indeed. Well, well what, what could we say about this? It kind of speaks for itself if you've not played it at all. Watch the intro, <laughs> at yeah. least. I guarantee if you watch the intro, you'll want to play the game. You will. It's, uh, you will. it's, it's in. It's an incredible intro. I haven't, I haven't played the game, but I watched it. I watched it today, and well, we watched through a load of these intros today. And Last of Us, we watched in dead silence. Yeah, pretty much. We've been taking notes and talking through all the rest, and that one, it just grips you. Yeah, and we we like, didn't what? make a single note. Oh my god! <laughs> we just sat and watched because it's it's. Uh, and I've seen that intro a few times now, and, yeah. and even it still has an impact. 
it's still like, whoa. Yeah. Presentation is 10 out of 10. The acting is 10 out of 10. The... It, it's... And it's not all a cutscene. You you do actually play a lot of that intro. Yeah, yeah. As with as with all these, there's all these top fifteen. There is elements of play. In fact, yeah. most of them are playing at least a bit. With, yeah. You know the the standard cinematic intros and cutscenes that they have built in. But this one is um, it's it's really nicely mixed in. The pacing the of of Last of Us, I think, was the the absolute best out of all these intros because it's it yeah. slowly builds but again it gets just the right it's not too slow yeah, it's also it, not too long it, yeah it isn't too long it doesn't take too long to get there but it doesn't go too quick it slowly builds yeah it's uh, and then and tears it, your heart out yeah <laughs> and the music as well is really good it's perfect yeah. for the for the last of us yeah yeah uh, that's a clear winner it is it is indeed so if we've missed anything out or if you have anything that tickles your pickle that we didn't mention is there any, any that you thought of that didn't make the list um, there was one uh, Wolfenstein oh yeah which was a very uh, I must admit that did look quite very cool, cool intro yeah it could have easily on another day made the list if we were yeah. doing it on another day how about you anything we missed um not really from games that well like I said I would probably put Metal Gear Solid 5 on the list if I could but Rise yeah. is on there so we couldn't um, yeah we do like to keep it as uh, yeah one, we don't We otherwise one game it, from each series certain series are good at certain things that's yes. why we have to put the rule in yeah. place <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but yeah so that's all top 15 intros or yeah. openings to video games thanks for thanks for your time guys and as we say if you if you disagree with anything, let us know in the comments. You're wrong, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're wrong. <laughs> Bye. Awesome. See you in a bit. Bye. Like, comment, and subscribe.